This is Rugger Matrix International, the world's leading independent rugby podcast quoted more than anyone else. It's no wonder that our major partner is Strike, Australia's leading provider of Bluetooth car kits, so you can stay safe in your car and avoid hefty fines. So go hands-free with Strike. Enter the code Rugger Matrix and you'll get 10% off. Go to strike.com.au to get your discount. Rugger Matrix also brought to you by mybean.com.au. We sell at roasters' prices. Let's get it on. Hello and welcome to Rugger Matrix International, episode 192. And as you can see by that screen down there, it is super finish. We've got a week to go before the finals of Super Rugby. And Mark Cashman, as you join me now, as you always do, Waratahs have finished top of the table. They can't be knocked off. Yeah, Bronk, 53 points. Uh, a good, uh, what is it, seven points clear of the uh, the nearest rival. So... Uh, Great results over the weekend. The Tars really demolished the Highlanders and uh, the good old Cheetahs did a job on the Sharks. So uh, that's added a bit of spice, a bit of flavour to the end of the season, hasn't it? I knew my other favourite team would come good eventually, but uh, yeah, knocking off the Sharks, a huge effort there. And I saw a photograph of Jake White after that game. He wasn't too happy and with good reason. So that's uh, relaxed the pressure on the Waratahs. And it means they've got a big game this weekend against the old enemy, the Reds. The Reds doesn't matter that they're not in with a chance. This game will be on for young and old. It always is, the interstate battle. Yeah, a lot of feeling in these games. Suncorp Stadium, uh, a good way for the Reds to say uh, goodbye to their fans for this year. And they're obviously, you know, they want to build on what's uh, what's been going on there. It's been a tough year up, uh, up in Queensland. You know, a lot of injuries, a lot of guys out of form. But, uh, yeah, listen, they, they can finish off their year sort of quite well. But... The Tars, listen, it just keeps on, uh, the momentum just keeps on going. It's a juggernaut in many cases, isn't it, Bronk? Uh, juggernaut indeed. So I think the big threat, of course, and they haven't played them all year, will come from across the ditch, the Crusaders. And good to see Namani Nandolo, who is a good friend of Rugger Matrix and uh, just a good friend of ours, full stop, and just powering after his um, work with Fiji. And congratulations to Fiji for qualifying for the Rugby World Cup 2015. And of course, critical try that Namani scored uh, against the uh, against the Blues on the weekend, wasn't it? Uh, it really sort of sealed that game, and uh, it knocked the Blues out of contention virtually, and kept the Crusaders uh, with the, within a within within a grasp of uh, at that stage what was top spot. And uh, but at this stage now, after the weekend's round of uh, of second spot, and uh, you know having a double chop at the, uh, the semi finals. Absolutely. So there's plenty to look at. Will the Sharks win? Will the Waratahs win? Will the Crusaders win? It's pretty damn tight at the top of the Super Rugby uh, table as we head into the weekend. I will say off the top, saw, well, didn't see Kissy. He is in Australia at the moment. Les Kiss, he has been cited. And um, looking to uh, almost caught him on Saturday. But uh, we had to you know, work on the way, basically, while he's having coffees with everyone else in Australia, you know. He is having a good, but um, we will try and catch him this week to show you next week just a couple of minutes with Les Kiss before he heads back to Ireland and takes up his immediate role with Ulster uh, before heading back into the Irish setup. So that's to come later in the week for next week's show. But as you can see over the shoulder here, this is a shot I took this morning uh, with uh, Jacques Boquita. And uh, he is uh, with the great Mark Cashman here meeting the press today at beautiful Clavelli Beach. Yes, that is winter in Australia, and it was a wonderful morning there. The Waratahs having their uh, uh, recovery session this morning. And uh, the first cab off the rank, uh, Kasha, was uh, Kirtley Beale. And Kirtley Beale having a great season, moving out a little bit wider, not at 10 with Bernard, Bernard Foley. It's not Bernard, it's Bernard Foley playing at 10 for the Waratahs. And Mark Cashman was leading the press pack. Um, you know, there's always that that, um, that first mate's... Uh, uh, mentality out there and uh, you know it's always going to be on when we're when it's a New South Wales Queensland match so um, you know we're up for it um, it's just a matter of you know I'm um, sticking to what we do best and and uh, focus on us because um, you know at the moment that's working for us. They got any sledges in their team Kurt? Uh, there's not too many I think uh, you know when, you, when you're out there in the heat of the battle you know things happen but you know that's 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 the nature of rugby and you know things are going to get heated but uh, you know obviously we don't want to be competing in that type of um, and dishing out that kind of stuff so we just want to you know play some entertaining rugby and and obviously enjoy each other's company out there 
Kurt Kirtley, you spoke about uh, what was said at half time. What was said after the game? Oh, obviously, Czech was very pleased with it. Um, you know, everyone was very happy with the result because obviously we, we achieved the goal that we wanted to at, from from the start of the season. And you know, a lot of the boys um, have worked hard to get to where we are today. And I think um, you know it's very pleasing just to to be able to um, you know get the result we wanted. Um, you know, obviously we, we'll regather today and and uh, we'll uh, focus on the next uh, few games ahead. Was it a win celebrated? Um, I think there was a few boys battered. Obviously, there was um, a lot of bumps and bruises um, was the cause from the game, and I think uh, you know guys uh, rested. We had a short. We've got a short turnaround. We've got a Saturday game against the Queensland Reds, so you know, uh, you know, there was a little bit of celebration, but you know, uh, it was quickly turned into um, you know focused um, and getting your body right so we can all turn up um, and be right for today. I think after every loss, there's always a there's always a, things that you can learn from and I think you know if you want to be successful you, you always got to have a, uh, you know a couple of setbacks so you can actually um, move forward and after all our losses this year I think uh, the best thing about it is that we, we've learned a lot from the losses and, and it's helped us become the team that we are today so um, you know obviously we've experienced that and I think uh, we've worked hard to actually work on the weaknesses that we we had um, during those losses and it's helped us uh, you know um, secure the top spot. Cliff parlow has got his mojo back, Kirtley, hasn't he? It's, uh, yeah. There's a certain aura about him at the moment. Yeah, there is. Um, Cliffy's obviously um, worked very hard. He's probably one of the main blokes that, uh, you know, he doesn't talk too much, but works, puts a lot of effort um, in behind the scenes and, um, and just leads by example. And I think that's definitely rubbing off on a lot of the young guys coming through. And, um, you know, that's what, that, that's what it's all about. You know, the, the guys up front leading by example. And... Um, and it's just helping us create that really good environment and, and an enjoyment environment. So, um, not only Cliffy, there's also um, the whole Ford pack. I think uh, you know credit to them. They're, they're obviously setting a really good platform for us backs to actually play off, and and that's what's working. You know, um, there's a lot of um, grunt up front and a lot of mongrel, and and it's definitely helping us. Um, you know, put our case forward. So, you know, full credit to them. And the team Tonga hand signals back again. Yeah, exactly, mate. Uh, you know, the boys have been working really hard and. I think um, that's just the simplicity behind it, mate. It's a lot of lot of um, lot of lot of work, working hard with each other, and, and, and just uh, you know big team efforts, and um, that's what it's all about. Is this some of the best and most consistent form that you've produced in your career? Yeah, obviously that's been a goal of mine, trying to play consistent football, and um, obviously it's a it's a big challenge, um, you know, doing it on a week to week basis. But you know, if, uh, I'm just really enjoying it. The guys around here are making my job easier, and all I've got to focus on is just uh, you know preparing my myself right and, and getting my roles right and for the game and and just adding my bit, not adding, not overdoing it, but um, you know just playing my part and and adding what I can do to the team. So um, and like I said, yeah, it's it's you know the forward pack are going forward and that that makes my job easier. So and I'm sure that the backs, a lot of the other backs, can say that as well. Can you talk a bit about uh, the role Bernard Foley's uh, got in in the team dynamics at the moment? Yeah, obviously he's um, he's leading by example. He's one of the guys up front, um, you know, who who does a lot of hard work behind the scenes um, and uh, you know prepares uh, the game plan with Daryl Gibson and, and Check, just so we can uh, you know uh, come in with a clear clear uh, game strategy and and it's working. So you know he's he's a great performer. He's he's obviously one of those other consistent performers that we're that we have in the t in the team and he's improving week to week. So. You know, when guys are stepping up uh, each week, it, it just helps everyone else, um, you know, grow in confidence and, you know, having confidence um, at the back end of this season, uh, at, at the end of the season, um, going into finals, uh, you know, it's going to be a huge, uh, it's going to be a huge help. Can, can you talk a bit about the combination between yourself and, and Bernard? That's, uh, that's been an important part of the mix, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, Bernie's, Bernie's obviously a great player and uh, I think the key behind it is just having a clear understanding of what we want from each other and, Obviously, we've got a key, key role within the team to, to, to direct the team around, and so I'll try and help him out as much as I can, and and um, and he does that vice versa. So, you know, we've, it's obviously um, you know uh, just a a thing that just happens out there on the field because you know we've obviously got key roles, and if we don't do our roles right, then you know um, there's going to be holes within the team. So, you know, it's important that we stay together and, and we work hard with each other and to try and you know um, you know play our roles and and, and uh, you know direct the boys around.
good chat from Kirtley Bronk, wasn't it? And uh, listen, the thing is emphasising, and I know this is a, is a rugby and a sporting cliche, one week at a time, but uh, it's a mantra that I think they've all bought into and uh, they're very confident in the systems that they've got running there at the TARS. And you must admit, it is working. It certainly is. They're doing a really good job. Uh, but this man here, quick word about him, Potkita. He uh, has come in, and I know that uh, Michael Checker, he's had a pretty good plan to start with building up this side, but he needed someone abrasive, aggressive, and uh, who was going to give them go forward, and he does everything. And that's exactly what they've got, isn't it? Uh, listen, his impact at the breakdowns on the weekend against the Highlanders was absolutely phenomenal. He had a uh, pretty much, a, I, I, th- I think he uh, played in, into the round about the 70th-odd minute uh, there, and... Uh, was a uh, one of the reasons why the uh, the Tars were getting such great ball, and that's uh, when they're getting that quick ball. Listen, that's uh, that's when the guys out wide. That's when uh, Israel Folau, Alofa Alofa, and Rob Horn, and all those guys, Kirtley Beale, of course, they caused the havoc. Then quick ball, that means they win. All right, let's hear from the man himself, Jacques Potkita. Confident this side is at the moment now that you've secured ton- top spot. Yes, for for us as a, as a team, it just. Uh... It's just so nice that we worked for, uh, like, we worked so hard during the year to, to achieve this this uh, top spot and um, just like all this, the blood and sweat that we put into it just came down and just is, is so nice, uh, good feeling, but we know the job's not done yet, so I'm going to finish it. Are you aware you're one of the crowd favourites, mate? <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I don't I don't think I am. I just, uh, I just love the way the boys support us and just coming out every weekend and just cheer us. That's why we we haven't lost a game at home yet, because uh, the people just come out and it's just unbelievable to play in front of a, a crowd like that. I don't think you were here for the Reds game, were you, earlier in the season? You, you get your first taste of the New South Wales Queensland rivalry. What do you know about it? <laughs> no, my second game oh, I played against. Play? Yes, yeah, I played yeah. against the Reds the second game. Uh, it's just the, the build up is just so big, and uh, doesn't matter where you are at the log if you if you first or last or. It's just about uh, just the, the game is so massive and just for me not coming from here it's just uh, such a such a great feeling to be a part of that uh, New South Wales Queensland game. I won't say that I think uh, Michael just brings that calmness uh, uh, among the players and he just the way Michael speaks to us all the time it's just he's unbelievable the, the way he talks to us and just keeps us calm and just uh, don't get ahead of ourselves and just focus on the main goal and uh, we know our jobs are done yet and. Um, we're just working hard for that second uh, of August. Yeah, obviously, uh, if, uh, if you want to be if you want to be a good Super Rugby team, you must win your home games. And uh, just just for us playing every home game uh, to the best, uh, it's just such a big advantage if you play and the crowd's just behind you and coming every weekend and supporting you. It just makes such a big difference for us. When you came here, I mean, did you ever imagine that uh, the White Hawks would be as successful as they have been? Yeah, I, um, I knew we were going to be in the playoffs. Uh, I wouldn't have signed here if I didn't think the Warriors would be good. Um, so I knew they will be in the playoffs, but obviously um, you want to you want in the top. So that's 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 your goal in the beginning of the season. Jacques, tell us about some of the the cultural things you've had to sort of work through coming here. Um, not really any cultural things. Just the boys for <laughs> as a funny on a funny note. Uh, the boys gave me a budgie smuggler, so a speedo. <laughs> I don't really wear that, so they got me into those. And just like all the boys, just uh, the different things they they bring. All the guys in the team. Uh, it's just nice to be a part of that. Twelve months on, uh, this uh, playing for the Waratahs, playing in the finals was uh, maybe a notation in your manager's diary. Uh, can you believe it's all happened? Yeah, like I said, the boys, uh, since uh, since I got here, everyone's just buying into this whole system and we work it by week by week and we're climbing the mountain um, that Czech put out for us and in the beginning it was 21 weeks and we just take it week by week and we don't get ahead of ourselves and like we, we, were, we worked hard for this and so it's not a surprise for us but like I said, it's not done yet. You've had a pretty strong season. Uh, is there any chance we could see you back here beyond this season? Could we see you here next year as well? Yes, definitely. I'm still going to be here for another two years. Yeah. And uh, it looks like a pretty smart decision at the moment. Yes, I like. I'm just enjoying it. Like it's uh, just amazing to playing uh, playing with this uh, bunch of amazing guys, and we, everyone just brings out the best in each other. So that's what I like about that. Where, where does uh, where does the lie land with uh, with test selection, Springbok selection? Like um, obviously you can't control the 
can't control the uncontrollable. So for me, for I can just play every game as I can. And if I get selected, I do. If I don't, uh, just play the best for the Warriors. Oh, Bronk, what about that, eh? Cultural differences. <laughs> it's his speedos. Uh, speedos. Or as he calls them, the budgie smugglers. Yes, uh, I'm not too... Uh, yeah, uh, luckily for us, we were on the top platform and didn't see the recovery session because it can be horrific with some of those front rowers and the forwards uh, in the water at Coogee Beach. Are you shouting way. out to Ben Robinson, mate, are you? Uh, he's got the best physique of all time. The cat, there's no doubt about it. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, beautiful scenes there at... Clovelly Beach this morning. Um, the other thing about the Waratahs that's been impressive has been the work of the forwards. And they've always been a really good forwards team, haven't they? I mean, I'm going back to the days when I was working with Neil McKenzie there. Massive forward pack that really did the job. But you know what they're doing here, and this is the one thing that um, that I've been harping on for ages, is upskilling the players to play a bit more like the All Blacks with the ball in hand. But you can't do that and shirk your responsibility at scrum time, at the breakdown, and, of course, at line-out time. Yeah, interesting thoughts about the guy who we're throwing to next, Bronk, uh, Sakopi Kepu. He was talking about wasn't 100% happy with uh, with uh, the work at scrum time. Pretty happy with a couple of carries there. And uh, the return of uh, Team Tonga for him, he, the Team Tonga signal uh, after he scored that great try. Good run, but... Uh, a lot of work to do still with the scrums and the set piece. All right, let's hear from him, the wonderful and versatile front rower, Sakopi Kepu. It's, it's a bit further, further down the track, but um, we've got to tick the boxes and, and do a you know do a job next week, oh, actually this week, and then you know rest up, you know uh, whoever we play in the semi final actually do a really good job, and then uh, those things will happen. But um, until then, you know we're just going to take it a step at a time, and and put behind the, the victory last night and, and this week's a different week and that's what, footy. What do you think has been the key factor for, for you lifting your form? What, what's kind of helped you most? Uh? Um, I think checks um, obviously emphasise a lot on our mental side. Um, not only the, the footy on the field but uh, what happens off the field and we've done a, a lot of you know goals, goal setting since the start of the year and a lot of uh, work around preparing ourselves mentally and um, I found that I've, I've taken a, you know a lot of things on board and uh, gone back and and just sort of spoke about it with my wife and and we've you know she's really been a great um, support you know not only you know um, when I wasn't getting the time I was getting and and um, and at the, at the moment as well so you know as much as the footy is important the, the you know the off-field stuff is, is just as important if not more you, you mentioned that uh, has check been hard at you at different times this year yeah, look, and I, I know, I, I guess um, it's only because he knows um, what, not only myself, but a lot of the players are capable of, and um, and he's, it's all about getting the best out of, you know, uh, each and every player, and um, and I think that's starting to come through, and um, I think if we can all do that and contribute as as, as a team, um, we, you know, we, 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 we'll see more results like we did last night. Obviously it gives you plenty of confidence, you know, when you guys are rolling forward yeah. with such momentum. Yeah, look, and that's you know that's 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 you know any good team um, has a great forward pack, and um, you know we've worked very very hard during the season. Um, you know the contact sessions have been non-stop. Um, I mean Thursday was a was a massive session for us, and it's just about you know body hard and, and getting ready for those big moments. And um, you know he's he's a forward himself back in his day, and so he expects a lot from us as as a forward pack, and if we can perform, uh, you know, and perform and provide that that platform for the backs. You know, um, you got one, you know, nine to fifteen that can turn any game around. How good is this scrum game? I mean, you had the Highlanders mm. on the back foot a couple of times there in the second yeah. half. Is, is this the best the Waratah scrum has performed since you've been part of it? Oh, to be honest, um, you know, I wasn't too happy with, uh, you know, maybe two or three scrums personally, but um, you know, there was just, I guess, we're happy with it. But um, it's definitely not a not a performance that you know I want to put 80 you know we want an 80 80 minute performance as a scrum and you're always going to look for little things to improve and I think we can still improve but uh, definitely moving in the right direction. Someone like Bernie Foley seems to have just grown in stature since getting yeah. been given the Wallabies number 10 jersey. But you know, must, yeah. you know just confidence boosting to have a 10 that you know is really mm. steering the team around the park. Yeah, look and I think it's just a, a, an effective 
everyone having confidence in each other and and the biggest thing for us is us forwards do our job the halves do their job and then the backs you know the, the outside backs do their job and, and if everyone can do their job and, and do it really very really well and and have the knowledge and the, and, and the confidence in each other um we, you, you know we'll go a long way and um and that's starting to show and, and credit to himself he's taken every opportunity um, not only at test level but here at Super Rugby level with two hands. And what about that little uh, little growth going on there? Is that just hanging around, the little incentive to win the grand final? Is that staying, staying through till the end of the season? Yeah, um, look, I, I left it a few weeks ago, and um, oh, actually before the Wallabies, and it, you know, sort of, I don't know, I'm a pretty superstitious guy, and sometimes, and um, you know, I sort of just let it let it grow, and I've I trimmed it a bit, but um, it'll be there, yeah. I see Bernie's got one going on as well. Yeah, a few, of the, a few of the boys have got some, and I think it's winter as well, you know, it's just rugging up and it's a little bit cold, so, yeah. And Bronk, a lot of people wouldn't realise that uh, Sir Kepi Kepu started life as a, a barnstorming number eight for the uh, New Zealand under-21 side and also the schoolboy side, so uh, a very adaptable player and uh, he spoke then. It was interesting to uh, get his thoughts there about uh, how hard uh, Michael Checker has actually pushed him during the season. There's been some hard times there, there for Kepps, particularly before the uh, before the internationals came up when he was struggling for a bit of form, struggling for a bit of time on the field. But uh, that's all turned around now. He's uh, he's very much the cornerstone of that Waratahs pack. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, here's another good story too because... Checker hasn't been afraid to use older players in his squad, and our next guest is uh, pretty sensational. Yeah, very important part of this Waratahs mix now, Bronk, isn't he, Mitchell Chapman? Uh, he's a line-out caller, a very intelligent line-out caller, and that's been critical since the injury to uh, to Dave Dennis. And uh, and listen, at this point, hats off to uh, the way Stephen Hoyles played on the weekend. A very, very strong game, called the line-outs very well was able to, to, to vary the throws uh, throughout the game and they just kept the pressure on. But uh, Mitchell Chapman comes on and continues it there. And his versatility is absolutely vital to this uh, to this TARS 23. He can play in the second row and he can play six and also eight as well. So, uh, yeah, a very, very hand, handy asset. And at the start of the season, he was uh, he was uh, cropped up uh, with an ankle, ankle injury before the start of the first game. So great to see him back. And he's obviously uh, thankful for the opportunity at this time of the year. He is, and uh, let's hear from him now. Mitchell Chapman from the Waratahs. Yeah, it was pretty much a write-off for me when I um, had my injury back in January, sort of six to eight month prognosis, which ruled me out for the season. But... Um, you know, with the surgeon and our physio and whatnot, we sort of came up with a plan to try and get back to the finals if uh, if my services were required. And you know, unfortunately for Dave, he sort of got injured and whatnot. And tell tell us about the rehab process, Mitch. Yeah, sort of. Um, well, as I said, it was sort of a six to eight month injury. I managed to get back in four and a half, but it was sort of you know about about the three month mark. I started sort of running, and, and it was just a case of whether or not my ankle could sort of adapt and and uh, handle the training load, which is you know so far so good. Obviously. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's been a good time to come back. The guys have played really well all year and it's sort of been pretty entertaining to watch from the grandstands for most of the year. But, um, yeah, it's pretty lucky to get a run, really. And, um, you know, if I can contribute anyway going forward in the finals, then I'll be looking forward to it. Your role's pretty important at line-out time. You're, uh, you're you're one of a couple of callers in the, in, in the forward pack. Yeah. Uh, uh, does that add pressure? No, I don't think it adds pressure. I mean, that's sort of always been my role on the team over the years, been calling the line-outs and organising them off the field and whatnot. But um, it's a couple of guys there who can do it. You know, Halsey obviously did a really good job last night and him and myself uh, go back a long way. I've done a, done a fair bit of work off the field and the line-outs along with Dave before he was injured. So, um, yeah, I mean, if, if for some reason, you know, the line-out needed my, my services throughout the finals, then, yeah, I'd be ready to go. How difficult was to watch on while this team developed to where it is now? Yeah, it was pretty frustrating. I mean, having trained the whole pre-season and then getting injured the last week, um, you know, of the pre-season before the first trial, it was tough to cop, especially, you know, in my age when you're getting on a bit. So, um, yeah, it was it was tough to go through that. But, uh, you know, it's part of the game. You know, everyone, everyone has injuries and whatnot. And I was just uh, fortunate enough to be able to get back and have a bit of a role this season. How much would you relish the possibility of uh, having some game time against Queensland in one of those? Yeah, games? yeah, it'd be fantastic. I always love going back up there to, um, to Suncorp. It's a great stadium and... And, you know, the crowd still gets behind the Reds up there, even though they haven't had such a good year. But um, you know, all my family and whatnot and, and friends are in Brisbane. So it'd be, you know, if, if I get the opportunity, it'd be great to get up there this week. Tough to keep a lid on it? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, Cheek does a pretty good job of keeping a lid on things. 
you know, putting things in perspective. Um, I don't think this team's getting carried away in any respect at the moment. So we know we've got a job to do, and I think this week will be a really good test up there. Um, they're not sitting, you know, up the top of the ladder, but Queensland New South Wales games are always really physical. So I think that could be a um, good test for us going into the finals. All right, there he is, Mitchell Chapman. So the Waratahs, uh, they're big, they're abrasive, uh, they've got experience. Uh, they're probably the best prepared I've ever seen. Uh, and I've seen a lot of Waratahs teams fail at the uh, pointy end, but they've got a long way to go. I mean, they've got to come through the Reds this weekend. And I remember in, um, when Bob Dwyer decided to rest so many players against the Crusaders uh, in that game, and uh, the Crusaders put 90 points on the Waratahs. It was embarrassing, and it set us back heading into that Brumby semi-final the following week. And that can't happen this week. They've got to keep the momentum. They can risk injury, but that's the way it's got to be. Bronk, you were, uh, you're talking about preparation and uh, the backroom boys. Uh, I'd just like to have a big shout-out to the to the S&C staff at the Waratahs there. Listen, they've got them in, in absolutely tippy-top condition there. Hayden Masters is, is the boss of all that. Kieran, Cle- K- Kieran Cleary is... Uh, is the uh, the physio that gets them uh, very much uh, very much on the uh, back on the field as as quickly as possible, and also that uh, you know that back room of uh, the coaching back room of uh, Daryl Gibson and also uh, Nathan Gray, they're doing a fantastic job, very much driving this uh, this uh, Waratahs bandwagon, aren't they? Yeah, they certainly are doing a great job. Um, But the Brumbies this weekend, can they sneak in? Because we've talked about the Waratahs at length. Uh, The Crusaders, they're storming home. As we know, it's going to come down to the last game of the last round, and it will, because the Sharks are playing in that, just to see how that top six works out. But the Brumbies, they have got a chance. It's slim, but they've got a chance. Yeah, yeah, very much so, Bronk. They're uh, they're sitting in sixth at the moment uh, on 40 points with the Chiefs and the Force. They've got a plus 12 uh, percentage where the, uh, where the Chiefs have uh, only uh, a plus 3 advantage while the force is minus 28. It's a game they've got to get in there. It's down in Canberra. It's on Friday night. They've got to get in. They've got to win it. If they get a bonus point, they're, uh, they're through, to, through the finals, wild card, and uh, away we go. Yes. So who are they playing? The, the Western Falls. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I thought I'd said that. <laughs> we had to make it clear. We revved it up and we said, oh, okay, so who are they playing? So, And the Force, they, are, they have shown this year that they're very strong in digging in when it counts. Yeah, the Force has sort of let it sit. They've had it, they had it in their own destiny to make that uh, semi. So I know the Brumbies will be uh, absolutely uh, backs against the wall effort. They've had a number of injuries. They had 10 out against the Waratahs in Sydney. So they will need to win this game. And if they win it, that's pretty much going to be all they need to do, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. If they pick up a bonus point, that's uh, that's great, Bronk. But uh, yeah, listen, as as I said earlier, they just need to get in there, win the bloody thing, and get out of there. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great to see them there because having uh, two teams through to the uh, finals, whether it's them or the Force, hey, not a problem. So let's uh, let's wish them both the best of luck uh, this weekend as they take on uh, each other, and we head into the. Uh, Final round of Super Rugby before the finals begin. All right, Casho, so just a quick word about um, who you think from the other um, countries are going to be the threat. I just can't go past the Crusaders. Um, You know, the Waratahs are going well, but they haven't played the Crusaders this year, so it's a big unknown. I mean, what what an epic we could see if they meet in the final. It's a classic uh, in many cases, Bronk. If they do meet them, whether it's uh, at some stage during the, during the uh, during the final series, it would have to be a uh, it would have to be uh, somewhere very uh, or have to be the final, I, I would imagine. But uh, listen, the uh, the Crusaders are probably the only team that can uh, probably uh, blunt or or stop the the Tars' momentum at, at the breakdown, and uh, that's going to be a classic, uh, classic clash of styles, really, isn't it? Uh, a team that can close them down, and a team that could uh, against a team that can really rip other sides apart. And home ground advantage is the big thing. I remember when uh, Ewan was coaching the team, we were just desperate to get the home ground advantage because that means everything against teams like the Crusaders. The Crusaders can win anywhere, but knowing that, it, it gives you a greater advantage if you're, you're playing at home. It just everything's a bit better than playing in those conditions uh, in New Zealand. And the trip to South Africa is a really tough one. So, look, it's going to be a, a great final series. It will come down to the last game of the last round, as it always does. Can't wait to see that. Uh, of course, preparations continue in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. And uh, I know Toulon looking for all sorts of uh, personnel. 
uh, they, they continue to um, recruit and look around. They're buying the world to lawn, aren't they? No, they are. Actually, Bronk, just harking back to the uh, the importance of home ground advantage uh, during a final series, it's something like uh, of the 18 Super Rugby Grand Finals, 14 have been, been won by the home team. So that's mm. uh, that's indicative of how important this win over the weekend for the Tars has been and how important the home team advantage is going to be through the final series. Absolutely. All right, Casho, uh, thanks for coming in. It's uh, been a great... Uh, you know, ride through the Super Rugby Series. And as we say, 192, it's going to be a super finish. Enjoy your weekend, Casho. Thanks, bro. All right, there is Mike Cashman. And uh, you enjoy your rugby. Great finals run. And next week, the mighty Les Kiss. Until then, enjoy your rugby.